All right, so I've actually held off on making this video for a really long time. And I actually don't want to make this video right now. It's, um, it's something that's very emotional for me. And um, like I said, I held it off for a really, really long time. But it's a really crazy story. So I guess about a month ago, I got an email which was actually to my business email. And my manager sent that email, he forwarded to me, and it was from this guy named Sun. And Sun basically said that he's been following me since the good old wear testers days, and that his friend and his friend's fiance got lucky on the undefeated Kobe raffle. And they don't need two pairs. And instead of flipping it and making a quick buck, uh, you know, they wanted uh, the pack to go to someone who would appreciate it and someone who was a real Kobe fan and it just so happened to be in my size and so they said you know we're willing uh you know to give this to you um we know it's going to a good place and um this all happened like a few days after I had to put my dog down from cancer so I was in a really bad place and in a lot of ways I still am you know 2020 has been really rough um yeah i don't know i guess i just opened the box but what i'm trying to say is you know you guys know my stance on the whole kobe reselling things i've asked people to not resell kobe's i know it's a free market i know it's your right as an american you know you can do whatever you want but there comes a point where ethics comes into play and ethics don't really you know have rules it's just the right thing to do what feels right and to me you know I'm not gonna go out there and, and buy a pair of Kobe's just to sell them because I know there's someone out there that's really hurting and really mourning, you know, because people looked up to Kobe and I looked up to Kobe. When he passed away on that Sunday, people I hadn't heard from in years, like years, called me. They didn't text, DM, or Facebook. They called me just to check up and see how I was doing because they knew how much Kobe meant to me and how much I actually really led or lived that Mamba mentality lifestyle I really did for better or worse there were some people that I burned bridges with because I was so you know mambo focused and uh, they called me and they just wanted to see how I was doing so um, so when I got that email from Sun it, it honestly felt like Kobe was looking out for not just me but like real Kobe fans out there and um, we all know it's like impossible to win on sneakers already. So when you add the Kobe thing on top of it, it became extremely impossible. I've tried and I've struck out every Kobe release. Um, so to have this happen to me was one of the most incredible things that has ever happened to me um, from this whole YouTube thing. I've met a lot of great people. I've been able to, um, you know, have a bunch of great relationships with people but this by far is the most amazing thing that has ever happened to me and so this box has been sitting here for a few weeks and um i i haven't even seen a pair of kobe fives in hand you know so this is very exciting for me and i got a little note here from sun he says Jaron, I could see that Kobe meant everything to you, much like he did to me. Wanted these to land on the right person's feet. Wouldn't it have been possible without the help of my amazing friends, Annie and Britt. Happy birthday. Enjoy the shoes and keep practicing that Mamba mentality. Mamba forever. Yeah, again, son, thank you so much. Also to uh, Britt and Annie. Um... It really means a lot to me. Um, wow. I'm crying over all the tissue paper and stuff. You know, when all the Kobe stuff was dropping, Nike was saying, you know, we're bringing the Kobe stuff back. I would have never thought in a thousand years I'd have an opportunity um, to get this, this pack here. But like I said, there are amazing people out there. And those amazing people have given me the opportunity to add these in my collection and really cherish these as a piece of Kobe memorabilia that I honestly will remember for the rest of my life. It, it truly is amazing. But 
here they are guys the undefeated pack now we have two colorways here now i'm not sure exactly what the inspiration behind this particular colorway is the white one but i know that this multicolored, you know kind of mismatch pair is inspired by like the 12 teams that took kobe or who passed on kobe in the 96 draft so you know i think the teams are actually here on the tissue paper yeah you have Philly, Toronto, Vancouver, Milwaukee, Minnesota, Boston, LA, New Jersey, Dallas, Indiana, the Warriors, and Cleveland. So all of those team colors are right here on the shoe. Um, man, this is so nice in person, guys. I really don't even know how to um, really explain it. But, you know, let's look, the, the colorways themselves... I like the white one just because it's simple, it's clean. It's something that I could see Kobe wearing, you know, on the court. You have the white, you have the metallic gold swoosh, you have the mamba scales on particular parts of the upper. Then you have this very nice shade of, you know, aqua with the Kobe logo as well as the undefeated logo on the tongue. While these other ones obviously take on a much more louder, you know, approach. And I dig them. I think that this is going to be you know, more useful as an everyday wear. You can mismatch them, pair of jeans, joggers, whatever. And of course, with the white pair, you're always gonna be afraid that you're gonna, you know, stain them or ruin them or whatever. But, you know, it's just not something I would see Kobe wearing. And obviously, you know, that plays a huge part into how much I like, you know, a particular Kobe Bryant sneaker. The OG colorways are always gonna hold a special place in my heart. But, you know, I love this colorway, I do. I'm, I'm so, so happy to have this in my collection now on both colorways you can see the swoosh it has kind of a i don't know how to explain like a poofy design you can see the heavy you know stitching on the outline of the swoosh and the swoosh itself you know isn't flush it's not fused onto the upper it kind of comes off like a poofy jacket almost or like a couch i guess is what you could say not the biggest fan of it i just think it takes away from the very sleek nature of the Kobe 5 silhouette in general, but you know, it is an artistic, you know, decision that Undefeated went with here. What I will say is I absolutely love the metallic gold fuse overlays on this mismatch pair here on both of the toe box. That is an absolutely, you know, extremely clean look. But I think, you know, you guys have seen everything that has need to be seen about this pack. Um, I just wanna take a moment here just to talk, you know, uh, about Kobe and hopefully I hadn't s told this story yet on the channel but I only got to see Kobe Bryant play one time live and it was in 2014 or no excuse me it was in 2012 and I was meeting up with my dad for the first time in I don't even know how long 15 years I hadn't seen my dad or talked to my dad in 15 years. He hit me up on Facebook. Uh, he wanted to meet. So we met up in California, which is where my grandparents live. And, um, you know, we rekindled. And I said, you know, while you're out here, we should go watch a Warriors game. That would be a lot of fun. And it just so happened that the Lakers were in town. So I looked up the tickets and they were really expensive. I wanted really, really good seats. So, you know, my dad was asking me, how much is it going to be? How much is it going to be? And I didn't know what his, you know, financial situation was like. So I lied to him and I said they were 150 bucks each. And he said, OK, I'll pay you back. They were actually about 1200 bucks, like 600 bucks each. So um, I lied to him and uh, we went to the game and this was just a regular season game, right? This was before the Warriors became the dynasty, this was Kobe, Dwight, Steve Nash, Paul Gasol, that, you know, era of the Lakers. And Steve Nash's first game of the season was tonight. Uh, Dwight Howard was there, Kobe was there. So I was really excited for the game and it was a back and forth game. You could see the flashes in that Golden State Warriors team. Like these guys might be onto something here. And Kobe was just holding it down. It went into overtime and Kobe made clutch plays after clutch plays. And I just remember this guy in front of me. 
he knew I was a Laker fan because I had my Laker gear on, I had my Kobe gear, and every time the Warriors would do something, he would turn around and scream at me. And it was all good fun. It wasn't like he was being rude or anything. You know, we were just rooting for two different teams. But when Kobe hit clutch shot after clutch shot in overtime and eventually won the game, that dude in front of me, he just, he just left. He didn't look back or anything, he just left. He got out of there really quick. And I was so proud in that moment to be a Laker fan, not just because we won and because Kobe played great, but because that was a very, very special night to me as a person. You know, I'm here with my dad. The one thing I knew about my dad, which I knew very little of him, was that he was a Laker fan. And I'm a Laker fan. I grew up a Laker fan, probably because he was a Laker fan. And so I'm here, we rekindled our relationship after 15 years of not seeing each other. This is a special night for me. I will always remember this night. But for Kobe, it was just another day on the job, another day at the office, regular season game, on the road, in December, against a non-playoff team, right, in the Warriors. But he played his heart out. He, he could not have known that that was a special night for me, but it was, and he absolutely made it a special night. So that hopefully just shows you guys like what Kobe meant to me. And, um, you know, it just sucks that we're not gonna have him around. I've, I always look forward to seeing what he had to say about certain things, you know, in the basketball world and just in the world in general. Um, he was a source of a lot of inspiration for me, and I know he was a source of a lot of inspiration for you guys as well. So, um, honestly, this pack that you're seeing here before you, I could not have gotten these without Son, without uh, Britt, without Annie, but especially without you guys. Because you guys put me in this position for Son to know who I am and to reach out to me. So, I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Um, this means so, so much to me. Um, but that's really all I have to say. Um, there's only one real way, real proper way to end this video. And, and that's to say, um, Mamba out.